Welcome to a review on matrices and basic matrix operations. Before we start talking about linear systems of ordinary differential equations, we need to talk about matrices. A matrix is an M by N array of numbers, where M is a number of rows and N is a number of columns. Recall rows run left to right and columns run top to bottom. For example, we denote a three by five matrix as follows. We often use a capital letter. Here we have matrix A, which is a three by five matrix. Again, it's a three by five matrix because the matrix has three rows, one, two, three, and five columns. One, two, three, four, five. The numbers A sub I, J are called elements or entries, where I is the row and J is the column of the entry or element. For example, the element A sub one, three is the element in row one, column three. A sub two, four is the element in row two, column four. And A sub three, two is the element in row three, column two. Sometimes you will also see commas between I and J. When representing a vector using a matrix, we usually mean a column vector, meaning an M by one matrix. Remember this means the matrix has M rows and one column. If we mean a row vector, we will explicitly say so. A row vector is a one by N matrix, which means a matrix with one row and N columns. We usually denote matrices by uppercase letters and vectors by lowercase letters with an arrow such as vector X or vector B. By the zero vector, we mean the vector with all zeros. And now let's define some properties on matrices. We want one by one matrices to really act like numbers, so our operations have to be compatible with this viewpoint. First, we will multiply a matrix by a scalar or number. We simply multiply each entry in the matrix by the scalar or number. For example, here we have two times a two by three matrix. To perform the scalar multiplication, we simply multiply two by each element in the matrix. Notice two times one is two, two times two is four, two times three is six, and so on. Matrix addition is also straightforward. We add matrices element by element. For example, here we're adding two two by three matrices. We simply add the elements in the same position. One plus one is two, two plus one is three, three plus negative one is two, and so on. And we subtract matrices in the same way. If the size or dimensions do not match up, then the addition as well as the subtraction would not be defined. If we denote by zero the matrix with all zero entries, where C and D are scalars, and A, B, and C are matrices, we have the following familiar properties, which will remind us of the properties of real numbers. First, we have A plus zero equals A, which is equal to zero plus A. This should remind us of the additive identity property. Next, we have A plus B equals B plus A, which should remind us of the commutative property of addition. Next, we have the sum of A and B plus C is equal to A plus the sum of B and C. This should remind us of the associative property of addition. And the last two properties should remind us of the distributive property where C times the sum of A and B is equal to C times A plus C times B. Similarly, the sum of C and D times A is equal to C times A plus D times A. Another useful operation for matrices is the transpose. This operation just swaps the rows and columns of a matrix. The transpose of A is denoted as shown here. As an example, the transpose of this two by three matrix is equal to this three by two matrix. Because we're interchanging the rows and the columns, notice the dimensions change from two by three to three by two. The first row in the original matrix becomes the first column in the transpose. And the second row in the original matrix becomes the second column in the transpose. We'll go ahead and stop here for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll talk about matrix multiplication, which is a little bit more involved. I hope you found this helpful.